Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we will take you to another spectacular place in Australia, in Queensland, Springbrook National Park. It will be a fascinating journey and we have a lot to cover in this video. But before we start the new video, please have a look at my background. As you may have noticed in the recent videos that we are showing you different beautiful places in Hobart. This is another spot in the Hobart waterfront and in my backdrop we have Mount Wellington, spectacular Mount Wellington. We actually had some snow until yesterday because it's winter in Hobart and in Australia now. And this is a waterfront of Hobart and we have river, we have the mountain. So it's pretty spectacular setting all the time. So let's move on to the today's video. From Gold Coast, we took a day trip to Springbrook National Park. Our first stop was at Parlingbrook Waterfall and that was an amazing waterfall. Although it didn't rain recently, so we didn't have much water in that waterfall. But the rock cliff and the steep fall was spectacular. We also visited the best of all lookout and that was another beautiful lookout stop that we had from that best of all lookout yes it's called best of all lookout from that lookout we could see the canopy top of the Gondwana rainforest from that lookout we could see Byron Bay and the Byron Bay lighthouse so that was pretty amazing walking through Gondwana rainforest was just amazing as well on our way to the lookout at the best of all lookout we saw an Antarctic, ancient Antarctic beech tree that reminded us the history of Australia, how the continent was formed. Gondwana used to be a supercontinent, but about 105 million years ago, the supercontinent broke up and that formed today's Africa, Latin America, India, Australia, New Zealand, and Caledonian Islands. And so this tree reminded us that prehistoric time all these land masses were together as a supercontinent. Next stop was at the Kenyan lookout, but another spectacular lookout, and there was a waterfall called Rainbow Waterfall. So we'll explore that in this video. Finally, in the last part of the video, we'll cover the most interesting part of this video, the natural bridge, naturally formed bridge, and the waterfalls. We went into the cave under that natural bridge, to see the waterfalls. Altogether, the cave, the natural bridge and the waterfalls was just mystical, magical. On this tour, we learned about some beautiful and amazing trees in Queensland. For example, the stinking nettle, the strangular fig, and we also learned about a dangerous Queensland spider called trapdoor spiders. So overall, you will be able to see all these lookouts, beautiful waterfalls, and also the natural bridge so it will be a fascinating, very exciting video. So please enjoy this video. It was a bright and sunny winter morning in Gold Coast. We went for a day tour to the Springbrook National Park near Gold Coast. Meet our tour guide Russell. Russell made the day most enjoyable with sharing knowledge on local history, plants, natural beauty and the spiders. We kept most of Russell's original narrations, so please enjoy the tour. The Springbrook National Park is a protected national park located in the Gold Coast hinterland of Queensland. The park is part of the Shield Volcano Group of the UNESCO World Heritage listed Gondwana Rainforest of Australia. In December 1994, the UNESCO World Heritage Committee officially extended the area now known as the Gondwana Rainforest of Australia as World Heritage Area. Our first stop was at the Parling Brook Waterfall. It was a short walk to the viewpoint. Look at this massive but fallen tree. It's almost hollowed. Do you know how it happened? This tree has been eaten out by termites. So if you come like around there or down a bit, you'll see it's hollowed out all the way through. Um, basically, it takes hundreds of years for this to happen. You know, the termites are very small, but there's a lot of them. And um, eventually, they'll take down these trees. Um, people, they figured out they could make a beautiful musical instrument out of it. Um, obviously, much smaller ones than this. On our way to the waterfall, Russell explained some Aboriginal words and their meanings written on a board. Like Bellaringa means two falls. There's a place called Twin Falls that we'll see from Canyon Lookout later. Numbumbar means sulfur pumping dog. We can go, go through the Numbumbar Valley and we drive to the Natural Bridge. 
As you may have noticed that we have used some Australian Aboriginal sounds and musics for this video that we recorded recently in Gold Coast. Australian Aboriginal people and communities have a history of over 40,000 years. But as tourists, we don't get to learn that history often. So it was very refreshing to learn a few Aboriginal words. We spent about 30 minutes at the site. All the waterfall had less water due to lack of rain in recent months, but the vertical fall from the magnificent height and the red rock cliffs in the background covered with dense rainforest, this was just stunning. From the Parling Brook waterfall, we took a short walk through the Gondwan rainforest to a lookout called Best of All Lookout to look over the Numinba Valley. On our way to the lookout, we found a preserved huge ancient Antarctic beech tree from the supercontinent of Gondwana. As I mentioned at the starting, the great continent of Gondwana broke up over 100 million years ago, forming different lands across the sea, which are today's Africa, Madagascar, South America, India, Antarctica, New Zealand, New Guinea, New Caledonia, and of course Australia. This tree reminded us to imagine how our world would have looked like if we were a single massive country in the world with no division, well, we'll never know. From the lookout, we could only see a dense forest and a lush green valley, as far as our eye can see, until we hit the deep blue ocean. It was an amazing view. We could even look at Byron Bay and Byron Bay Lighthouse as weather was so clear. Do you know Byron Bay is the most easterly point of Australia? Over to your right there, that, that big uh, mountain there, that's called Wollumbin. That used to be called Mount Warning, but they've changed the name back to the Aboriginal uh, terminology. So that's now Wollumbin, uh, and that's where all the volcanic activity started in the area here. If you look sort of out to the right a little bit, we see a bit of a bay coming around there, and um, that's actually Byron Bay. Um, and if you look really closely, like right out to the tip of that bay, um, you'll be able to see a little white speck. That's the lighthouse of Byron Bay out there. That's pretty cool. You can see all the way out there, I reckon. Our next stop was at the Kenyan lookout. It was equally breathtaking. There was a waterfall called Rainbow Waterfall. Although due to lack of rain in recent months in Queensland, it was not very strong fall, but the view was spectacular.
beauty of this lookout was at a different corner. Weather was so clear that we could even see the whole Gold Coast skyline. That was an amazing view. From the Kenyan lookout, we travel to the most exciting part of this tour, the natural bridge and the waterfall. At the entrance of the site, Russell drew our attention to a few specific plants, especially a plant called stinging nettle and an extraordinary plant called strangler fig. We couldn't imagine that trees could be serial killers too. Please listen to Russell. Like, yeah, so it's basically ginger, right? And then these berries on top, they're like a, they're an appetite suppressant. So like if you suck on the, on the film on the outside of those berries, uh, the Aboriginal people used to use that as an appetite suppressant. Actually like a ginger, like root sort yes, of plant. Yes, but like the berries, if no, you're no. sucking, is the taste I, like a I, ginger or I, not? I don't think so, but I've never had one. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how safe they are. Let's try it. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, anyway, this one, this is the dangerous plant. So. This one here is the big leaf, eh? It's called a stinging nettle. The worst form of this is called a gimpy gimpy. Um, and it's the most painful plant in the world. Um, basically, all over these leaves are like really, really tiny hypodermic like needles. You can barely see them, they're really small. And if they get into your skin, they release a neurotoxin that scientists describe as more of like a, um, a snake venom or a spider venom compared to like a normal plant sting. Uh, the pain usually lasts for between two and three months, so it's not like a short-term thing, guys. But and only then, the skin or, or the bones as well? It, it, it just hurts your hand, like, like you, imagine if you got like burnt or something like that. Oh, yeah. Like, like Yeah, so two or three months usually, but some people report the pain lasting for like one or two years. And there's nothing the doctors can do to get rid of that pain apart from just give you painkillers. Um, it's a really bad plant, guys and you don't want to get hit by one of those. I got hit by one when I was a kid and um, it really hurt, you know, and it was just a small one, a uh, small amount. Uh, you can imagine if you fell into a bush or something like that, having it all over your body for that sort of period of time, it, um, it can get really bad. <laughs> I point out, so these are the hoof pines I was talking about earlier, they, that they harvested a lot out of from like the Narang area, put boats from them. Um, there's also a thing called a strangler fig. So see that one right there with the tree and then there's something else wrapping around it, that's a strangler fig. There's another one just down here that's um, a lot older. Um, basically the strangler figs uh, what will happen is a bird will come along, it will eat some of the strangler fig seeds, it will poop them out in the rainforest canopy, and those seeds will germinate up there, and this tree will start growing downwards from the top of the canopy, so one of the only trees will grow down sort of thing. After years it will eventually root into the ground, and it will start to really take over the, the host tree. This will take hundreds of years until it gets to a stage where the host tree is like completely uh, encased and then the host tree will eventually die off um, and leave a big hollow. So there's one that's just up here, you can sort of see it, um, that, that the host tree has completely died off in and it's a really cool photo, you can sort of see the light shining through all the way up to the canopy. Um, Walk to the natural breeze was a fairly easy walk down the hill and coming back was even easier so it's easily accessible to most people. The natural bridge is a naturally formed rock arch 
over Cave Creek of the Nirang River. It was formed from a waterfall that undercut a cave beneath the waterfall and dug a pothole on top until the two joined and the creek flowed through the cave, leaving an arch across the front. Sound from the waterfall was loud and the acoustics inside the cave was just wonderful. This was our time again to learn a bit more about some plants and the trapdoor spider. So you can see how it catches me. Mm. I have to push back the other way to let go and it's got spikes all the way up the trunk and all on the leaves as well. And um, basically the Aboriginal people, that they'd use those to like make like fish traps. And then also you can like chop the bottom of those and then they have, they store water in the trunk. And you can get a like, nice little sip of water mm. if it's like a, you know, an area like in the dry okay. season. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The trapdoor spiders are amazingly intelligent creatures. They construct burrows with a cork-like trapdoor made with soil, vegetation and silk. They wait inside with slightly open trapdoor to feel the vibration of the smaller insects. At the right moment, they open the door to catch and drag the victim inside. It's our unbelievable nature. For a trapdoor spider. See the door in the front of it? Yeah. At night time that will open up, the spider will grab something, uh, the small insects, and drag it back in. Whoa. There are trap doors. That was a big one there. <laughs> Wherever he is inside there, we don't want to get hit by him. We went on top of the cave, to the bridge area, to see the source of the waterfall. View from the bridge was fascinating too. We had a moment on the natural bridge before we travel back to Gold Coast. So friends, this was our nice day at the Springbrook National Park. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please visit Springbrook National Park. Stay safe and goodbye until the next video.